Hello, in this video we're going to look at long run real GDP and the aggregate production function. So the production function for an economy is a useful device to look at in thinking about how long run real GDP is determined in a country and why it might vary across countries. So we'll start with this equation where y is real GDP or real income and it equals uh, the following where A is total factor productivity, K is the capital stock, and L is quantity of labor. So with this aggregate production function, we're going to look at solving a number of things here. We're going to solve real GDP. We're going to solve for the real wage, the real rental cost of capital. We're going to show that the share of income to capital and the share of income to labor are going to be represented by these exponents up here. And to do that, we're going to assume a few things. We're going to assume that the capital stock is currently at $160,000. The number of workers in this economy, L, is 10,000. And our total factor productivity is 10. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to take those values, A equals 10, K equals 160,000, and L equals 10,000, and we're going to plug them into the aggregate production function. And then we're just going to simplify here. So 10 times 160,000 to the 0.25 power is 20. 10,000 raised to the power of 0.75 is 1,000. So multiplying all this together, we have an economy with real GDP of 200,000. The next step is to get the marginal product of labor from this production function. So rewriting the aggregate production function, we're going to derive the marginal product of labor, which is nothing more than the partial derivative of this production function with respect to labor. So taking the partial derivative uh, with respect to labor, we have this 0.75. I'm going to bring that down in front, and then that's going to be multiplied uh, through by everything here. Um, and then the final step in taking this partial derivative is this 0.75 minus 1. That's where this minus 0.25 is coming from. So again, 0.75 minus 1 leaves us with L to the minus 0.25 power. Now all we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this marginal product of labor at those values that were given to us on the first slide. So A is 10, K is 160,000, and L is 10,000. So simplifying all of that, we get marginal product of labor to equal $15. And the interpretation here would be one additional worker would increase real GDP by $15. To get the real, real wage in equilibrium, all it, all it will equal is this marginal product of labor. So the marginal product of labor equals a real wage in equilibrium and that equals $15. Uh, just note here the real wage is just a wage, the nominal wage divided by the price level. So the real wage is $15 equal to the value of the marginal product of labor. All right, the next step is to get the marginal product of capital from our aggregate production function. So as before, we're going to take a partial derivative, but this time with respect to k. So we bring down this 0.25 in front. Then it's going to be 0.25 minus 1, leaving k raised to the minus 0.75 power. Now evaluating this marginal product of capital at our stated values of A equals 10, k 160,000, and L equal to 10,000. Simplifying this, we get the marginal product of capital equal to 0.3125 or basically 31, a little over 31 cents. So here an increase of one dollar in the capital stock would increase real GDP by roughly 0.31 dollars. In equilibrium the real rental cost of capital equals the marginal product of capital so the real rental cost of capital is just again a little over 31 cents. And in our final step here, we notice that we have a total eco we have an economy that has real GDP of 200,000 or total income of 200,000. The total capital income, the amount of 
income going to capital is just going to be the rental rate of capital times the capital stock. So 0.3125 times 160000 So capital is getting $50,000 of the total income generated in the economy. So in terms of a share, 50000 divided by 200000 is 0.25. And you'll notice this 0.25 is uh, what K is raised to in our production function. In terms of the total labor income, just take the real wage of $15 times the number of workers. The total labor income in this economy is 150000 Now dividing that by the total income in the economy, we see that labor share of income is 0.75 or 75%, where this 0.75 again is representing what L is raised to in our aggregate production function. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.